everyone. I am Emily Hopkins from Meg, joined by my colleague Ash Raja, and we are here to talk about Chat GPT. And it has definitely been hitting the news cycles here in the U.S., as I'm sure you're probably seeing over in the Australian side of things as well. Um, but my question for you, Ash, because you were one of the first people I knew who had used it, um, how, how have you been using ChatGPT? What's that looked like for you? Oh, uh, goodness. When it first came out, I was super excited. Um, I'm still in an experimental phase, to be honest with you. Like, I think as of a lot of people are with this um, new tech. Um, first thing I was doing is I was doing a, a range of things. I started asking it a bunch of questions, right? Like just to see how far I could push the envelope. Started asking it simple questions. It could regurgitate um, information fairly quickly if it was on online. If you if you find something on Google, you're likely to find it in chat GPT in many different ways. Um, and then I started to push it a little bit and ask the conceptual questions, um, you know, philosophical questions, uh, very um, subject specific questions and see how far it'll, it'll answer. A lot of times it was quite accurate. Um, for instance, if I were to ask about, you know, what it means to be a feminist, it would answer, you know, a, a, a very pretty, pretty close sort of um, definition of what it is. And then if I were to push it and say, um, can you give me some recommendations of good feminists to read? It would give you some really good, um, you know, uh, recommendations on, on who to read as well. And then I'll ask it even further and say, can you give me some references of, of um, academic feminists to read? And it would give you some good ones too. Um, I think that's when I started to realize, oh, there's a big potential here to be useful. You know, this can be useful in academic settings, in school settings. I think there's um, the the smartness of chat GPT is the thing that makes a lot of educators afraid of it, I think, because they're just like, wow, there's so much potential to this tech. How do we um, control it? How do we, you know, um, what's the word for it? How do we? It's like management almost, you know? <laughs> yeah, almost management. Like how do we how do we make sure that this is used for good? I think that's the main thing, mm -hmm. right? Like how do we, um, so anyway, uh, I started doing all of that and then I started to realize that there were very good applications for it um, because for one thing, sometimes you've like in, in my work here at Meg, but also like I'm completing my PhD at the moment in um, gender and sexuality in education studies. So one of the things that I do is I read a lot of, very massive text, right? And sometimes it takes up a lot of time. And sometimes you don't know if that particular journal or particular article that you go, you want to read is going to be worth your time. Um, and so that's when I found uh, AI, ChatGPT in particular, to be quite helpful because you put it through ChatGPT, ask it, can you summarize a bit of this um, article? And then it gives you some pointers. And then you say, oh yeah, that looks interesting. I'll read it. Or sometimes it summarizes things that maybe you're like, oh, it doesn't, it probably is not something I'll be interested in. And and then you can just park that, that article. I find that that sort of helps with efficiencies a little bit to, to decide what it is that you want to spend your time on. Um, so yeah, that was one application. Um, the other part that for me using it was, I almost started using it as a replacement to Google. Um, <laughs> it, like, Honestly, like started asking it more questions that I would ask on Google and, and, and get um, more pointed results. Because in Google, mm -hmm. I find obviously um, when you use Google after a amount of time, your algorithm only shows you what what you sure <laughs> what, you, what, what you're searching, you know, um, or who has the best SEO, you know, correct. those results will show up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing sometimes. But um, I, I wanted uh, a more sort of you know, holistic summarized version to come up and, and ChatGPT was very useful for me on that front. One of the other applications as well was in bibliographies, like, you know, in references where I had to sort of transpose APA into like, a, you know, Boston or something else. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was able to do that at first. I, th I don't know if they've changed that now. I think it's it's less, they've done a lot of things, ChatGPT, where um, there are human um, AI trainers that come in and try to uh, prevent certain things from being asked. For instance, if you were to go in there and you were to ask it to say something mean, it mm -hmm. would actually respond to you and say, oh, that's that's not nice. I am an AI bot and I can't 
do this. Um, and I can't say that mean, mean things or whatever it is. Um, if you ask it to do something um, academically, that would sort of, it's just kind of not integrity. <laughs> there's no integrity to, to it. Um, it wouldn't do it either. So I think there's a lot more protections being put in place, which is a, a fantastic thing that, sure. that they're doing at the moment. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. And um, so like thinking about this in the education space, I've seen some really cool examples of educators using it uh, and some students using it. And I actually read something the other day. I can't remember what it was in. It said that what schools are finding is that educators are using it more than the students are yeah. Um, yeah. And specifically bet, yeah. for like lesson planning and that kind of yeah. thing. And I think that there's a lot of potential for like yeah. how educators can use it. Like what, what have you heard from educators specifically about how they're using it or what have you read and what kind of sticks out to you? Yeah, look, they have, people have been using it for multiple ways. One of the things that I think is helpful is to, it it doesn't do your work for you. I think it just helps you find efficient ways to start, like as a jumping off point. Mm. For instance, a lot of educators I know use it as a lesson planning um, reference. For instance, they'd be like, all right, I want to plan this lesson. Can you write me like a very quick template? And it would do that for you. And it would save you, you know, an hour and a half, two hours of your time. And I think that for an educator, that's one or two extra hours is massive for, you know, for a lot of teachers, they're time poor. So that's something that would be so helpful for them to be able to do. And even things like summarizing course material and, and, and in various ways, you know, and making it sort of a little bit more um, easy to understand. You'd spend a lot of time doing that sort of um I wouldn't say it's like low cognitive, but you know, lesser, it's not, you don't engage high cognitive thinking for Mm -hmm. those sorts of activities. Um, And what it does is because of these efficiencies, you can reserve that time for higher cognitive activities. So you let ChatGPT do all of this work, you know, do all of your template planning and all that sort of stuff. And then you get more time spent to actually plan your lessons properly and, and, um, you know, look at proper, you know, theories, explore some data that you can, um, even, even with data planning, for instance, like if you want to, like I said earlier, if you want to have recommendations on what to read in a particular field, you can ask it that question and it will, um, give you some recommendations as a starting point. You still have to go off and and do the work yourself, but I, I hear a lot of educators using it to, um, get, get started. Um, I also know of teachers who, are. um, using it to help teach their students like digital skills so there's this one teacher I know um, I think she's probably read it from somewhere as well there's a lot of people doing this where they ask their students as well to do up the template in chat GPT so teaching the students how to put in the prompts properly how to get it to you know generate the things that they want it to generate and then have the students have the template and then put away their laptops and then spend the rest of the time writing their essays or whatever it is in long form. So chat GPT mm. is basically only putting up the template, intro, you know, body, all of these different things, and then getting them to write the rest um, themselves. And I think that's a very good use of um, the, the tech in the classroom to teach them how to generate those prompts to get the bot to do something that is useful for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned, and it kind of just made me think, reflect on my own time in the classroom too. It's that foundational prep for lesson planning is, it takes a lot of time. And I remember, especially in my early years of being a teacher, I would spend hours upon hours lesson planning. Um, And so like when, you know, when it came to like the the more creative things, the more higher order thinking things that I wanted to integrate. I was so burnt out from the first, you know, yeah. two, three hours of planning that I was like, you know what, let me just, I, I got, <laughs> I got the job done. It's fine. I mean, the lesson is planned, yeah. but I could really see how if you were to, you know, put in those prompts, save yourself an hour and a half, two hours of planning, and then you do have time and you do have energy to build upon that and do something more creative. Um, I mean, to me, that's a great thing, (laughs) you know, like that's only a good thing. And then also I love that potential use case um, with the students too. I've seen some really cool uses with students that involve like um, basically like 
reviewing what chat GPT put out or even saying, okay, you know, these responses were written by humans. These responses were written by chat GPT. You know, can you guess which one is which, like all those types of things, or how would you edit this response from chat GPT? I was even thinking that in the last blog yeah. that I wrote with all the listicles I got, I'm like, okay, well, wh what could I do here? Oh, I could pretend I'm a newspaper editor and I just have yeah. this writer who just keeps writing listicles and I really wanted to train them out of it. You know, yeah. like how would I, you know, I feel like that's a good teaching opportunity um, and learning opportunity for students too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is like, we, I think there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of fear always for things that are new, right? Like I remember in the year 2000, I don't know if you remember this, but people were afraid of the millennium, like that oh, was, yeah. it was going to shut down like technology or whatever it is and planes were going to fall out of the sky. All of this very yeah. <laughs> reactive sort of fear, right? And it always happens, I think, with any sort of new um, technologies. And I think with ChatGPT, it's so new and it's still in its experimental phase. And even the founder herself, uh, you know, the person who's like, created this herself has said multiple times that we they are in an experimental phase we don't yet know what sorts of applications that we are going to have we can already see some very practical applications that can be made in the classroom um, but I think if we don't use it at all then we're really getting left behind and I think one of the issues of education is the fear kind of refrains us from trying to explore and use this for good because what's going to happen if we don't um, do this now or try using it now or try helping our students to use it in, in a good way? I think what's going to happen is there are a lot of bad faith actors that will, in any industry, not just in AI, you know, will probably use this for bad, right? So I think we almost need to go ahead of that and say, how can we use this for better applications mm -hmm. in the classrooms before they, you know, um, other bad applications of it. So I think um, I think it's a good thing that a lot of educators are jumping on board and trying to find new ways of applying this. I think we're just really scratching the surface of, of how it can be used. But the reality of it is that there's no way of um, stopping this from being used in any way. So I think sure. we need we need to find um, you know great ways to to for for our for for ourselves to be able to use them, but also how to teach our students to use them. Yeah. Um, I, always, I always think about, you know, that, that old adage that I feel like every teacher has probably come across in, in their experience, but, um, you know, it's like, we're not preparing students for jobs that exist right now. We're preparing them for jobs that haven't even been invented yet, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I think about like, this is a perfect example of how, you know, preparing them to use these type of technologies might be preparing them from a job for a job title that we've never even heard of yet. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You know, and just in thinking about how um, education has progressed over the years, like even just the STEM and STEAM options that are offered in schools now, I mean, that that wasn't a thing um, back yeah. when I was growing up. And, you know, that's been developing over the last um, several years and just all of the other things that have um, kind of, you know, laid the ground for for that to happen it's it's definitely uh interesting yeah. and I do feel like sometimes education is slow to embrace those yeah. kinds of things you know especially like you know this is the way we've been doing it this is the way it's been happening but that's not a good thing necessarily you know no. really do have to evolve with the times if the students are paying attention to this tech well then by golly we we have to get ahead of the bad actors like you said in order yeah. to um prepare them for it it's not necessarily about protecting them from the world it's about preparing them for the world yeah absolutely I think it's that that's exactly it I think we have we do have to prepare them for something that's coming this is coming whether or not <laughs> we like it so this is going to be used in education in one way or another and I think we we have to to find out um how and what place it has in our education systems and kind of just make sure that we reimagine uh, our education systems for it to have a place in it, because I think one of the biggest things is that this this tech isn't perfect. Um, uh, and when you use it, I think oh, <laughs> I was re I was talking to a couple of academics the other day, and they were like, they don't understand the fear because the minute you see an article that is fully written by ChatGPT and not edited, you will know. And these are college professors basically who are basically saying there there's no way to to cheat using just the bot. Like mm. it's not 
possible. You would know it when you see it. Um, so really, we have to start thinking of this as more of a, it's just something that will help. It's an aid. It's a personal tutor almost. Um, and I actually personally, I feel like it democratizes um, access to information um, because a lot of times in schools, um, when we want to talk about fairness or not cheating, we have a lot of people who have access to, you know, um, personal tutoring, for instance, or other other kinds of help um, that maybe somebody else doesn't um, mm. doesn't have, and and that's a form of inequity, I suppose, uh, that you know tech could assist with. Um, ChatGPT or other techs would give you know everyone, regardless of your socioeconomic background, access to. This sorts of information, these sorts of personalized help. Um, I think in some ways educators, a lot of them are, are seeing as well the potential for seeing how um, not just ChatGPT, but generally big conversational models, um, how it can help with um, personalizing learning for kids with differentiated needs, you know, because some people are going to need a little bit more assistance than others. And there's only one teacher usually in the classroom of 30 how do you do that? You can't give the time that the students need, but maybe tech can. And, mm. you know, so that's that's just something that, that that I was thinking about that I think it's going to be really helpful for us in the future. Yeah, for sure. That was one of the 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 chat GPT listicle items that was given to me last <laughs> week when I was asking in the blog. Nice. It said personalized learning was one of the benefits. So, yeah, but absolutely. I mean, you know, all it makes is sense. You know, it's teachers are very limited with the amount of time and the amount of support that they have in the classroom now. And, um, you know, it is often that that ratio of one to 30. And, uh, you know, you're expected to differentiate and you're, you're only one person, you know, there's only so much you can do. So I do think that tech is a, is a natural um, support to lean on in those instances. So yeah, and I think support is the right word. I think that it's not going to replace mm -mm. human teachers. I think that's that sort of human connection and critical thinking and all of these other things. The AI is only as smart as its human trainers. Um, and th th that's the reality of it. And so for us, it's just about thinking how we can leverage on it to, you know, for our own good. And yeah, um, the more we train it, obviously the smarter it gets, but it's not going to be you know, in a way that we think it is. <laughs> I don't think it's going to sure. go around taking over over yeah. our jobs and the world and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, sci-fi tropes have uh, no. have definitely put that into our heads. But I do, I fully agree yeah. with you that it's only as smart as we train it to be and, um, and using it as the tool that it is and not as a replacement is really key. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So one thing we've been working on here at Meg is our own chatbot to assist with language learning. And we've actually been, you know, trying to train it in Mandarin and Spanish. And can you talk a little bit more about what that looks like on our end? How are we using AI for good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's for us, it's really about creating a personalized study buddy. Um, you know, our, our AI bot, um, you know, uh, affectionately known currently as Ziggy, um, is is you know going to be a conversational model in which students can practice speaking Mandarin and and um, Spanish in the classroom um, or at home uh, anywhere really that they have access to their um, learning management system. One of the things that I think would be helpful, especially well, we're teaching in classrooms that um, a lot of the students don't have the opportunity to practice some of this language. Um, you know, that maybe they don't have, some of them are uh, privileged enough to have a native Mandarin or Spanish speaker in the classroom with them, but a lot of them don't. So that that the time that they spend in the classroom with our language teachers is about the only time that they have to practice this. Um, and sometimes they're able to use that in the community, but having Ziggy will give them the opportunity to have these conversations and practice them. And I think um, the science is very clear on this, that the more time you spend practicing a language, the more time you contextualize it in a conversation, the more you retain that language. So I think that chatbot for us, our, our conversational bot is really trying to achieve that or simulate that sort of um, relationship. Um, and I say simulate because at the end of the day, 
we are still propagating them to use it with you know somebody in their community and um, using it in their daily lives but this will form a way to support that sort of learning for them um, it's going to be useful in other ways as well there's a, a speech to text component where they'll be able to type you know and learn how to spell you know um, where they can kind of almost like you know how kids these days are basically texting um, more than they're talking to each other so a speech to text component is uh, for our bot is going to be quite um, useful I think in that sense where they're practicing how to type almost having a phone conversation or whatsapp conversation with Ziggy or their, their study buddy yeah that's really yeah. cool and I think it's a nice bridge you know having studied abroad myself in Italy you know being um, surrounded by the language obviously is a, a wonderful way to do it but that's not something that everybody has access to. And like yeah. you mentioned, you know, these classrooms where they do have a native Spanish or um, a Mandarin speaker in, in the room or, you know, in their community, again, not something everybody has access to. So this type of tool is like a bridge builder, really, you know, like they've got their yeah. live lessons with us and they've got a place to apply it. Because otherwise, you know, if you're just doing the lesson, you're just receiving the information and you're, you know, only using it within the class and you don't really have any of these external places to apply it, um, you know, it, it doesn't stick. The language doesn't yeah. stick in the same way. So this is a great example of where tech can fill that gap. And, and again, the magic word support the process and in this case the language learning process for students yeah absolutely I'm very excited to kind of roll that out with our students soon I think it'd be a very helpful tool um you know um I think that's where so beyond chat GPT what I'm trying to say is that I think we're thinking about is as an open conversational model but conversational models or chat GPT-esque kind of uh, AI bot can have multiple applications one of it being Ziggy um, and um, it's it's got heaps of potential. We're doing it in one way, but I'm sure as we kind of watch how other people apply, we're going to be learning a lot of things about um, its usefulness. So I'm really excited about seeing that roll yeah, out. It is. It's exciting yeah. times at Meg and in the world of education in general. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>